In this video you will learn how to implement a custom tooltip inside Angular without any additional libraries. And actually just from the beginning I want to tell you that implementing tooltip is not an easy task. This is why if you just need a quick solution you can take a library. For example I can recommend you ng bootstrap, this is what I like to use, here you can see the page with tooltip, or you can use angular material, there is also a tooltip there. So now the main question is why tooltip is difficult to implement. First of all we must always render tooltip in the body, why that? Because if we are rendering tooltip inside our component, it may be cutted when we have overflow hidden or we have some different z index. If we are rendering it inside body, it will always be visible. The second point is that you must calculate the position of your tooltip, especially if you want to implement it on the different sides. With that being said, let's look on the project that I prepared. As you can see here there is just a button, hover to see tooltip. And we can check here inside source, app, app component html, here is just button and nothing more. And inside ts I also don't have anything. But I already created a new module tooltip, where inside we will implement everything. And as you can see here the most important part is directive, tooltip directive, and as you can see it is empty. And also a component, here is tooltip component, with zero html, just one div, some css for our tooltip, and also empty tooltip component. So how this tooltip will work? We will attach a directive to some element, for example we have a button, we can attach here a directive tooltip, and then it will render a component for us. So essentially this directive, tooltip directive, tooltip directive, must implement mouse over and mouse out, and at the moment when we have mouse over, it must render a component inside body. What component it will be? It will be our components, tooltip, tooltip component. And it is really nice to split tooltip like this, because you separate your tooltip component and the behavior, how this component appears, for example with mouse over or with click or whatever you want. So first of all here inside our tooltip component I want to provide several inputs, and what is interesting for us is text, this is exactly what we are rendering inside the tooltip, but also left and top, this is the position of our tooltip, because it will be positioned absolute. This is why here let's define our first input, and it will be text, and by default let's say it is an empty text. Here we will have one more input, with left, and the default position we can set to zero, and one more input, with top, and the default position will also be zero. Now we can use all these inputs inside our HTML, because essentially this is this tooltip that we want to render, and here inside we want to render the text from the input, but additionally we want to set here through style, left and top. So here I can write style.left, and here will be left plus pixel as a string, because it must be a string with pixels, and also style.top, and here will be top plus pixels which actually means we simply take two inputs and we are using them for the style left and style top, and our tooltip does not know anything regarding positioning on the screen, it is all provided from the outside. Now let's define how we will use our directive, this is why I am jumping inside app component html, here is our button where we want to have a tooltip. So for this we are writing tooltip, which is our directive, but also I want to provide here tooltip text, this is exactly what we want to render inside. For example this is our tooltip text. So this code must be sufficient for our tooltip to implement mouse over, mouse out, and text and render correctly the tooltip. And all this logic we must write inside our directive. So let's jump inside our tooltip, directives, tooltip directive, and first of all we know that we are getting an input, this is this text that we provided. So here we are defining an input property with tooltip text, and by default let's set it to an empty string. Now let's define mouse center and mouse leave by using host listener. In this case this event will be attached directly to our element. So here we want mouse enter, and let's name this function on mouse enter, which will return for us void. And I will copy this and do exactly the same for mouse leave. And here will be on mouse leave. 
So now let's check if it's working at all. I will write here console log on mouse enter and exactly the same for our on mouse leave. Let's check in browser. I'm hovering on our button. We're getting console log on mouse enter. I'm hovering out and we're getting on mouse leave which means our directive is successfully binded to our element. Now let's write on mouse center logic. And in order to do that, first of all, I want here a check. I want to check if this dot tooltip component is already there. And if it is there, then we simply return. Why that? It means that we already rendered a tooltip for our element and we are getting inside on mouse center again. It can be tricky to reproduce it, but we want to avoid unnecessary bugs. This is why if we get a second mouse center and we already have a tooltip, then we won't do anything. But in order for this code to work, we must define on the top our tooltip component. And actually we can even make it private. And this is undefined by default. And it is our component reference of type any. Now here we must first of all create a component factory. What is component factory? This is something that knows how to create our tooltip component. But in order to use it here on the bottom, I want to define a constructor. And inside we must inject a component factory resolver. And this is component factory resolver. Now inside our on mouse center, we want to create a factory. This is why here let's name it tooltip component factory. And here we're calling this component factory resolver dot resolve component factory. And inside we must pass a component. And in our case, it will be our tooltip component that we already prepared. So now we have a factory which knows how to create our component. This is why let's create it. But in order to create it, we must have an injector. This is why here let's have injector. And this is our injector that we will inject. So here now inside this tooltip component, we can assign tooltip component factory dot create and we are providing inside this dot injector. So this stuff will create for us a tooltip component. And lastly, we want to append it to our body inside DOM. But in order to do that, we must access our document. And in Angular, we can do it with the decorator inject and we are providing inside our document and we are getting here our private document of type document. So now here we can use this dot document dot body and here we want to append child and append child is just a plain JavaScript. And what we want to pass inside this dot tooltip component that we just created dot location dot native element. This is just a plain DOM element that we will append to our body. But it is not all, we also must provide inputs inside our component. And just to remind you here, we defined text, left and top, and we must provide it inside. In order to do that, I want to create an additional function. And let's make it private and call set tooltip component properties. So first of all here, let's check if we have a tooltip component, because if we don't have it, then we can't set anything. And TypeScript will scream here an error. This is why here, if we don't have this tooltip component, then we just return. First of all, let's provide here a text. In order to do that, we are writing this tooltip component dot instance. And here we can access our property. In our case, it will be text. And we want to assign here this dot tooltip text that we got as an input here on the top of our directive. After this, we want to assign left and top of our tooltip, but in order to do that, we must calculate the position of our element. In our case, it is a button. And in order to do that, we must inject a reference to our element. This is why here, private element ref, this is our element reference. Now here we can use positions of our element in order to calculate our tooltip. This is why here I want to the structure left, right and bottom. And we're destructuring it from this dot element ref dot native element dot get bounding client rect. And after this, we can calculate left and top. First of all, here, let's set this dot tooltip component dot instance dot left. And here we want to assign right minus left divide by two plus left. After this, we want to do exactly the same with our instance dot top. And here we can simply provide bottom 
So now we define the function which will create an input that we need to use and we must call it after our append child. This is why this dot set tooltip component properties and it will assign everything that we need inside our instance and after this we want to call the tag changes. This is why this tooltip component dot host view dot detect changes. So we finished our mouse over, let's test this out. As you can see here, tooltip appeared on the bottom of our element and it is attached to body. I will mouse out and as you can see, obviously our element is not removed, we didn't implement that logic, but here inside our elements, inside body on the bottom, you can see the tooltip. This is exactly what we attached to our DOM and here is our tooltip with left position and top position. Now we just need to implement mouse leave event. So here is our mouse leave and what we want to do here, first of all, we want to check if we have this tooltip component. Because if we don't have it, we don't need to do anything. Now we want to fully destroy our component and remove DOM element. In order to do that, we must inject inside our constructor one more thing. And it will be our app ref and this is our application reference. And here we can call this dot appref dot detach view and inside we must provide our this dot tooltip component dot host view. And as you can see we are getting an error, object is possibly undefined, it happens because here inside if I must put an exclamation mark, in this case it will check it correctly. And the last thing to do, we must destroy our component. This is why this dot tooltip component dot destroy. And after this, I just want to assign here undefined. So we're sure that we don't have a tooltip component inside. Let's check if it's working. I will reload the page, hover on the element. And now I do mouse out and our component is removed. And if you're interested to know how to implement pagination inside Angular without any additional libraries, make sure to check this video also.